Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying DCS World with Overkill. Today we're going to be taking a look at this beautiful bird and starting a new series in the F-16C Viper by Eagle Dynamics. So, um, as usual, today we'll take a spin around the uh, cockpit and take a look at all the instruments. Um, pertinently, uh, primarily the things that are pertinent to us, I should say. Um, but we'll go over everything at least a little bit. I just may not go into very much detail So if I skip over something it's something that we're probably likely not going to use and if we do we'll take a look at it later But for the most part, let's just go ahead and take a peek around and see what we got. All right let's See if I can get the camera in the right position here All right Alright, so getting started up here, we have our fire and overheat detection switch. Here we have our probe heat, forward for on, center for off, aft for test. Here we have our anti-G test switch. Here we have the onboard oxygen uh, generator uh, bit test switch. Just to the right of that, you have your malfunction indicator lights test button, so push it and it brings all the lights on board to make sure everything's functioning. Alright, here you have your um, EPU test switch. Down here we have the uh, uh, FLC, FLCS uh, power test switch, so it's the test switch for the flight control system. And then here we have the uh, FLCS power um, indicator lights, basically determining what channels of the flight control system have power to them. Um, and I believe they only illuminate if there's a fault. But don't quote me on that. Um, again, these are things that we may, we're probably never going to use. Uh, this is the digital backup, allows for a secondary software to be um, implemented into the uh, flight control system. Um, moving on over here, we have the um, alternate flap extend switch. Gosh, sorry guys, I couldn't think. And then here we have the manual terrain following. Uh, fly up switch, but I don't know if that's actually even enabled in the 16 yet. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure I would have seen that one. Your leading edge uh, flaps uh, lock switch, putting them into lock position, will lock them into their current position and therefore restrict the flight control system from being able to manipulate them. Your flight control system reset switch and the flight control system bit test switch. Here you have all of your trim knobs, your manual trim indicators. Here you have your roll trim, yaw, and your pitch. And then here you have the um, autopilot disconnect essentially. What this would, um, by hitting, putting the disconnect position, the autopilot would no longer be able to trim the aircraft and therefore the autopilot would no longer function at that point. So keep that in mind. Here you have your fuel master switch. Guard in the master position is um, where we want to keep it. Um, here you have your tank inerting switch. Uh, this reduces the inertial uh, inertial tank pressure. Now, I don't know if this is actually implemented in the 16. I know sometimes in the 18 I've seen a fuel pressure warning and that's what this is supposed to alleviate. So maybe we'll see. You have your engine feed selector and then here you have your um, air refueling door uh, switch. You'll obviously want to pop that open when going into an air refueling. We have our IFF master mode switches. Um, we'll go over this further on uh, when we actually get into the IFF portion of the F-16. And here's our light panel. We have our anti-collision formation lights. You have your um, flash and steady for your position lights, your wingtail lights, your fuselage lights. And both of these have bright and dim. And your aerial refueling uh, light. And then here is the master switch. Now, this is much like what, for those of you who fly the Hornet, um, you have the master light switch that allows you to very quickly turn the um, lights on and off on the exterior uh, of the aircraft. And this sort of works the same way. We just don't have the fancy little pinky button here. But so what you can do is you can set it to um, normal is all the lights that you have currently um, turned on. Here you have your formation light your anti-collision lights, all lights, and then off. When I map it to the HOTAS, I typically map norm and off. Um, one more thing about the anti-collision light, and we'll go into further detail later on, but uh, each one of these um, selections will change how many times the anti-collision light will blink, and therefore identifying your position in the, um, in the group. So, pretty slick. I had never heard of that before the F-16 um, rolled out for DCS. So, it's kind of excited to see something like that. All right, um, real quick, let me readjust the camera. Well, I guess you can see them. Here is the manual canopy knob, and over here is the canopy defogging lever. I don't even know if that's um, uh, 
uh, simulated in, in DCS. I don't think I've ever seen the canopy fog up. And then this little yellow handle right here would be the emergency, can uh, emergency canopy jettison. Let me readjust the camera and we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on. All right, so getting back at it here, we have our EPU or emergency power unit switch. Here would be the EPU run light, and here is the hydrazine flow light. Um, hydrazine, I understand, is a toxic chemical that's put into the aircraft, but that can be used as an emergency power source. Um, but um, again, emergency being the key word there, but I'm not, I don't know much about it, so I'm not going to go into much more detail. Here we have our master power switch, forward for main power, mid for battery, and aft for off. Here you have your caution reset light, and then here you have a few flight control system warning lights that will come up, and um, I think we'll go over those when we go over all the warning indication lights in the cockpit. All right, and then um, coming down here, um, so moving on down here, we have our airborne video tape recorder. Um, obviously, not something that we're going to be using a whole lot. But coming here, we have our electronic countermeasures, which hopefully we'll be using. I don't think that it's implemented yet, much like the Hornet. But here we have our ECM, or electronic countermeasure reset button. Here we have the uh, dim button. And then here the um, jammer switch to operate standby and off. And then here's the ECM transmit switch. And then obviously the ECM uh, control options, or um, um, yeah, control buttons, excuse me. Okay, so then moving on up here a little bit, let's go ahead and jump up to the throttle for us. All right, so from here we should be able to cover quite a bit of ground here. Here's our throttle cutoff switch. Moving forward a little bit, we have our communications transmit button, so your mic switch. Here you have your um, manual range and uncage, um, cage and uncage knob. Down over here on the uh, throttle, we have our dogfight mode switch. Coming down a little bit further, our speed brake switch, followed by the radar antenna elevation knob. And then coming down under it, you can barely see it right there, but there's a little hat for the uh, TDC uh, slew control. Now, something really cool I want to show you guys is this little white line right here. Okay, so this white line on the throttle and the white line on the um, sidewall here, you can see, indicates that the throttle is in the idle position. If this white line were in the fallback position, it would mean idle cutoff. Now here's where this gets cool for us. Okay, so where this gets cool for us is right here, when this white line reaches right here, you are in mill power. Okay, so this is going to be really handy for you guys mapping your axis and mapping your throttles to, especially if you have a detent and you want to get to the idle position. You don't never, you don't have to keep going to F2, you know, and look at the external, see if your afterburners are on. You just have to follow this white line, and once it gets to right here, you are at mill power. Okay, right here is the afterburner detent, and then obviously way back over here, um, right about the edge of this bolt here is the, um, obviously, afterburner maximum power. Okay, so anyway, I thought that was pretty neat that that was available to us. So, you know, always a cool thing to, to have little tips and tricks for mapping the, the controls in this game. All right, so here we have our COM1 and COM2 power switches. Down here we have our COM1 and COM2 um, mode switches. So you obviously have um, off, squelch, and guard for both sides. Okay, here we have our secured voice volume knob, our missile tone seeker. Uh, volume. So this is for the AIM-9 seeker head, our threat warning, and our terrain following um, alert system. Okay, and then coming down to the bottom real quick, you have your intercom volume. So this is speaking to uh, the ground crew, your TACAN and your ILS volumes, um, and then your hot mic and cipher switches. All right, here we have the UHF uh, radio. Okay, we have your manual selectors here to manually change the channels. Up here you have your uh, preset channel selector with the preset selector screen here. You can press the standby button to push the radio temporarily into standby mode. Here you have your main both or ADF. ADF is used for ADF following. Uh, for those of you who don't know, basically um, if you come to the F10 map for a second, where is one? Come on now, where are you? There you go. You could type this frequency into the ADF, um, set it on the or into the uh, UHF uh, radio and then set it to ADF navigation. You'll be able to navigate to the airport by using the ADF broadcast. Okay, so again, kind of a, a nerd thing these kind of days, but you know, it's fun to have it. 
All right, so let's go ahead and uh, just keep moving on here. Uh, right behind the throttle here, um, you have your afterburner reset switch. Um, the idea behind it is if there was an afterburner fault, um, I think it's digital electronic engine control fault is what's called. If one of those were to appear by putting into the afterburner reset, it should uh, attempt to clear one of those. Here we have our engine control switch. We have uh, primary and secondary. I doubt that we'll ever be able to use it, but secondary um, only provides 70 to 80 percent of mill power to the aircraft. Here's our start um, uh, selection switch or engine start switch. So we'll always be using the um, start one. Um, I don't know that we've ever used start two in the um, uh, for the F-16 for us. And then you have your run light right behind it. Now here, um, this switch is kind of interesting. You have your manual pitch override switch. So in the event that you are taking off and approach a stall um, and the flight control system will attempt to you know, override you. It won't give you much authority as far as pitching the nose down, which is what you're going to need to do in the event of a, of a stall. You rapidly flip the switch over to override, and it will give you more authority of the elevators, allowing you to get the nose down and, and start accelerating. All right, so once again, let me move the camera around, and, and we'll get moving again. All right. All right, so up here at the top of the handle, we have our spider um, lock handle for the canopy basically put the canopy down throw this guy down locks the canopy in position here we have our um, countermeasure slap button this basically will give us a third uh, countermeasure option at our quick dispose um, the slap button uses countermeasure program five um, so whatever five is programmed to when you slap this button that's what will jettison here we have your um, backup landing gear handle, your RWR dim switch, the power switch, the activation um, indicator letting you know that it's active and on, the search button. This will, when active, display on the RWR and S for anything that is a search radar, and then our altitude warning. <clears throat> okay, here is our speed brake indicator. Okay, coming over here, we have the countermeasures panel, we have the RWR on. Um, this will allow the system, uh, when in semi and auto, um, basically it will, uh, much like the F-18, the semi and auto, it, it will de determine what the threat is and um, use the best program currently available and jettison. We have our jammer and then we have our missile warning system, but I don't believe the missile warning system is implemented in this aircraft. And then our emergency jettison, your program selection, your uh, electronic countermeasures mode switch, standby, manual, semi, auto, and bypass. Um, the Symbology Brightness knob, this is for the Hickmas, the helmet mounted queuing system. Um, O1 and O2, these would be the external uh, countermeasure stores, uh, which are not currently implemented. And then here you have your chaff and your flare and count and your go no-go status lights. Coming up here, we have our stores configurator switch. Cat 1 would be for a light takeoff. Cat 3 is, you know, we're, we're going up heavy, a lot of armament on. And Cat 3 will restrict the authority of these uh, flight control services, uh, basically preventing us from doing something stupid with that much weight on the aircraft. You have your landing gear horn silencer, so that stupid beeping that it's always popping up when you either get too slow or the landing gear is in transition. You can slap that button and it will shut it up. We have our landing gear and taxi lights, down for taxi, up for landing lights. Parking brake and anti-skid. Um, brakes 1, channel 1, channel 2, I don't know that we would ever use this, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, ground jettison, if you put this into the enable position and slap the jettison button, it will enable the jettison of the countermeasure stores. Emergency stores jettison, landing gear uh, indication lights. Um, over here, this little, is your, this little button is your landing gear down lock release button. And here is the um, hook switch okay let's move up a little bit all right so i'm not going to cover everything coming around the corner here but i'll cover a lot of it here we have our aoa indexer letting you know that we're on speed and ready for landing just much like the uh any of the other aircraft rwr screen here's your handoff um button our rwr mode selection launch warning system test um, this is the unknown boat button, so if you uh, have an unknown ship that's displaying an RWR signal by selecting that button, it would allow us to uh, either display or remove it from the RWR um, system. So it basically just is another way to filter some of that junk out. Okay, and then we have the... Um, uh, over here on the right, we have the uh, target separation button. So um, 
when you have a bunch of RWR contacts tapped, stacked on top of each other, you can tap that and it will spread them out. But then remember at that point, the azimuth to the aircraft is incorrect. All right, you have your master caution acknowledge switch, you have your um, fault acknowledge switch, and then your IFF ident switch, okay? And we'll go over those at a later time, probably more so when we get into the um, caution and warning lights. All right, so let's go ahead and keep moving down the panel here. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have our radio frequency. Norm allows all electronic signals uh, from the aircraft to be displayed. Quiet is only radar, TACAN, and data link transmit. All the other emissions are inhibited. And silent literally stops all electronic emissions coming from the aircraft. So um, pretty handy uh, when you guys think about what that would be like to basically electronically make the aircraft go invisible for a second. All right. ECM indication light lets us know that ECMs are currently being, electronic countermeasures are currently active. Your laser arm switch. Alternate weapons release button. It's exactly what it sounds like. If for any reason the weapons release button on the stick fails, you can press this button and drop any of your ordnance that need to be released from the aircraft to strike a target. And then we have our um, master arm switch. All right, so moving on up to the HUD here. Now we will definitely be um, going over more and more with the HUD as you know we get into the different systems, but going by what's currently available here We have our pitch scale solid lines indicating climbing hash lines indicating descending you have your on speed indicator Just like with the uh, Hornet we would bring this up to the uh, flight path marker and um, To get us on speed you have your flight path marker here your horizon line heading tape with current heading box the no rad indicates that the radar is not currently active in, in our situations because we have weight on wheels. You have your boresight indicator for the gun. Over here we have our current airspeed or indicated airspeed and indicated altitude. Here we have our range to the currently selected waypoint, current uh, low altitude warning setting, and then uh, directly beneath it our time till target or time to go. Okay, which we obviously don't have anything at the moment. Um, coming over here to the left hand side here we have our current mock um, as well as our um, peak maximum G in its current configuration the master mode so we can see that we're currently in nav bearing to the uh, bullseye to the aircraft and our distance as well as our bank scale here and down here at the bottom alright let's go ahead and keep moving around all right, so over here we have our DED or our data entry display. Here is our ICP or integrated control panel, also known as the UFC or upfront control panel. We have our left and right MFDs, as I think I previously stated, and here's all of our standby gauges. We have our standby uh, airspeed indicator, altimeter. We have our AOA and our vertical velocity indicator indicating our uh, ascent and descent in hundreds of feet per minute and standby ADI or attitude director indicator which we actually have two of those which is kind of odd I'm not quite sure why that would be but maybe someone can shed some light on that and then down here we have our EHSI or electronic or electronic horizontal situation indicator which will be going into much further detail when we get into navigation uh, with tech cannon waypoints and etc and then here we have our fuel control panel now real quick let's go ahead and jump back up to the upfront control panel as there's obviously a lot to it you have your com1 and com2 selection your iff modes your list which we'll go over at a later time air to air mode air to ground mode over here we have the hud symbology intensity wheel down here we have the uh, HUD symbology um, or HUD raster brightness wheel, HUD raster contrast wheel, and then up here we have the critical depression control wheel. This would be used for manual bombing. Um, we have our FLIR polarity button. I'm not 100% sure what that one does yet. I don't know that I've ever had to use it yet. I'm sure that's something that will be um, implemented as we move further on in development of the S16. We have our FLIR increment and decrement, bu decrement button and then our FLIR gain level and then here we have our drift cutoff um, basically what this will do is um, cage the uh, flight path marker um, to the center of the HUD regardless of wind um, you would definitely want to put this back in the norm position before landing that way you can get an identification of crosswind okay and then here we have our data control switch also nicknamed the dauber so when you hear dauber left dauber right dauber up dauber down that's what it's referring to a recall button enter and then obviously the you know keypad and then this last one over here is our um, the uh, increment decrement selector switch for the uh, DED 
okay all right so moving right along guys let's uh let's move the camera around again and we'll get back at it all right so working our way around uh the top of the uh, right side of the canopy here so here we have our area refueling indicators so red indicates the aircraft's ready for area refueling the ar um will indicate when the aircraft has made a positive connection with the boom and is receiving fuel. NWS indicates nose wheel steering is uh, engaged and disconnect will illuminate when the aircraft has disconnected from the refueling boom. Here we have what are called the eyebrow lights. Obviously the uh, top row is more warning. So here we have an engine fire, hydraulic or oil pressure issue, flight control system issue, takeoff and landing configuration canopy is unlocked. Okay, the bottom row uh, indicates that the uh, uh, there's an engine over temperature or a flame out has occurred. The um, pressure light um, is part of the hydraulic pressure, so that's actually still one screen. Um, and then moving on down here, DBU means the digital backup software state uh, for the flight control system is active. Remember, I showed you that switch on the other side that I told you it was a backup software that we probably never use. Well, still. So again, then this takeoff landing configuration, and then you have the oxygen low light. Okay, moving on down to the gauges here. Um, again, we have a secondary standby ADI. We have a fuel flow in pounds per hour. Coming on down the uh, right side here, we have oil pressure indicator, engine uh, exhaust nozzle position indicator. So this determines how open or closed the exhaust nozzles are at the back of the aircraft. All right, then we have our engine RPMs and our fan... Um, turbine inlet temperatures. All right, let me go ahead and move the camera and we'll keep going. All right, so here we have our current uh, fuel quantity on board. We can see we're at 11,500 pounds. You have a uh, standby magnetic compass. Here's the uh, bit panel or caution panel letting you know what all the uh, current warnings of the aircraft are. We're not going to go over each one of these, but you guys get the gist. Your hydraulic pressure, and then we'll take a quick peek at the stick real quick for those who don't know. Here's your trim hat. This is the data management switch. Your target management switch. This is DMS and TMS. Your weapons release button. Your countermeasure switch. Your uh, field of view change. And your autopilot override on the paddle switch there. Okay. So real quick on these guys here, here is the EPU fuel quantity. This is the one I was telling you was called the hydrazine, um, where we have the red switch on the left hand side that you open up and it provides a, uh, chemically provides power to the aircraft. Okay, here we have our ca cabin pressure, a clock, um, and then moving from right to left here. Here we have our radar altimeter uh, switch, middle or forward is for altim radar altimeter on, standby, and then aft for altimeter off. Then you have your FCR or fire control radar power switch, forward on, aft is off. Um, then we have, have la, we have our right hard point power switch, forward for on, aft for off, and left hard point power switch. Okay, moving on down, we have our HUD scale switch. Um, forward um, displays the vertical velocity, um, velocity, altitude, heading, and um, up on the HUD. So it's basically a reject, which is what this is. Uh, VAH, it, VAH, gosh, I can't talk, sorry guys, um, is velocity, altitude, and heading information only, and aft is off. Okay, next we have our HUD flight path marker switch. Forward um, displays both the flight path marker and attitude reference bars. And then middle, um, Flight path marker displays the flight path marker only, and aft again turns the flight path flight path marker off. You guys can tell I've been talking a lot. I'm starting to lose it. All right, and then we have our DED or data entry display switch. Forward allows data from the DED to be visible on the HUD. Middle or PFL um, pilot fault list allows data from the uh, pilot uh, flight data display to be visible up on the HUD, and then off self-explanatory okay and then finally up here on the right we have the HUD depressible reticle switch um, forward is in a standby standby displays the standby reticle and removes all other HUD symbology middle is the primary which displays the primary reticle but does not remove any HUD symbology and then aft you guessed it is off so then we have our HUD test switch moving over here HUD brightness control uh, day mode uh, middles automatic brightness adjustment and aft for night mode and then finally over here we have our HUD altitude switch. 
uh, forward uh, altitude radar displays radar altitude on the HUD middle uh, is barometric and then aft is automatic and then finally um, on this last one here we have the HUD velocity switch um, cast displays calibrated airspeed on the HUD middle is uh, true airspeed displays on the HUD and then aft is uh, ground speed displays up on the HUD so that one's actually kind of handy I can actually see a couple different instances where we would probably want to use that um, back up here we have our seat adjustment which is always nice I love the aircraft that have these here we have our nuclear consent arming switch don't think we're gonna be worrying about that too much in DCS but it might be fun to play around with it you have your nuclear consent switch and then um, moving on down to this panel here we have our primary console brightness our primary instrument brightness panel uh, data entry brightness knob the switch back here is our mal malfunction and indicator lights brightness switches so um, let's pause I don't want to unpause it because it'll take our brightness switches away or our warning lights excuse me and then here is our air source selector um, or damn it and then here we have our uh, cabin lights switches so we have a console instruments the DED um, the consoles on the side and then here we have our um, instrument lights okay and then let me see if I can get the camera back we're just about done guys close enough all right so let's keep on going here here you have your air conditioning uh, control system if I find out that any of you guys are actually trying to do this and then complain that you're hot um, I'm gonna have a talk with your psychiatrist okay so then moving on up here um, this is your elbow rest um, but the panel back behind it um, would be the KY58 radio encryption mode selector I'm not gonna worry about that because I don't even think it's implemented um, and then finally aft in the back we have our oxygen flow here we have the oxygen power switch which we would obviously want in the normal position um, the diluter um, again leaving the normal position and oxygen supply lever okay and then your oxygen gauge itself for the oxygen pressure all right and then finally we're getting close here we go up here we have our UHF radio antenna selection switch coming to the right we have our identified antenna selection switch you have the engine anti-ice this could be one that you're going to want to pay attention to okay moving from left to right we have our modulator mission computer power switch our station stores power switch our MFD function display power switch our UFC power switch map power switch here we have our data link switch, our GPS power switch, and then here is the MIDS, multifunctional information distribution system, okay, or low volume terminal data link sensor switch. Um, this is a secure network, is what MIDS is. It's basically think of it as a secure radio. Um, that uh, it's just another. Um, it's a safer way of broadcasting transmission, so that way they can't be intercepted. Okay. And then here we have our INS alignment knob. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the cockpit of the F-16C Viper. So for those of you who stuck with this one, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something here. For those of you who didn't, well, then you're missing out on my jabbering right now anyway. And uh, again, for those of you who are still with me, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. There's going to be a heck of a lot more coming for the F-16. Next one will be startup, taxi, and takeoff. We'll get her airborne, fly around a little bit. Following that, we'll go into uh, entering and navigating waypoints. Then we'll take a look at landing the aircraft. And uh, after that, it's uh, game on, and we'll start dropping some bombs and shooting some things down. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good night.